Enigo is a great way to observe all of your GraphQL servers in production with peace of mind with advanced security features. Inigo allows you to build your GraphQL backends, operate at scale, and get a full understanding of how your API is being used. Once you've created an account and logged into Inigo, you can create a new service. So here we'll create a new server for CartQL, which is just an API that we'll use as an example here, but we can see from the list of GraphQL servers that is supported that we can use any one of these. If you're using something like the envelope middleware, you can use that. For this video, we'll use the hosted server, and then we can give it the URL to our hosted GraphQL server. It's recommended that you use one of the other options in production, so Inigo is able to observe what is happening right alongside your application. Once that's connected, you're now able to observe your GraphQL server, providing that you use this new endpoint. If you've been working with GraphQL long enough, this playground will feel very familiar. Here we can make requests to our GraphQL hosted API with this proxy in front from Inigo, and we can make lots of different requests here, and over time this will build in the analytics section of Inigo. If we make any mistakes with any of your queries, maybe the front-end application has wrongly requested a field name, and here, inside of the analytics, we'll be able to see all of that. So here we can see we have nine requests that we've just executed inside of the playground, and here we can see which one's passed, but with errors and without. We can also filter all of this data based on when you maybe released a new feature, and here we can see and trace all of the different errors that happened from the backend. Now let's execute some additional GraphQL operations. We'll open a new tab and we'll paste the mutation here to add an item to the cart. We'll execute this and we'll update the original query to include a name. If we rerun the add to cart mutation, this will increment the number of items in the cart, updating things like the subtotal and line total with the quantities. And again here, we can update any items that belong in the cart. And just like we've seen before, every time we run an operation, Anigo is tracing that and inserting this into the dashboard that we can use to track and trace what exactly is going on with our API. We can also see all of the different fields that are used inside of queries, mutations, and the types themselves. So here we can see the cart has a number of different fields that are being utilized, the same for cart item and that all important money type. As well as providing analytics, Anigo also allows you to configure the security of your GraphQL API by allowing you to configure things like race limiting and access for different roles. So here let's use the UI to configure some of the rate limit options, and once we are happy with those, we can apply. While that works in the UI, we can also do the same in code if you want to keep this configuration up to date and, and tracked inside of Git. Once you have the configuration, and you have a CLI that you can use to apply this in the same way as you did through the UI. When we created this example at the beginning, we used the hosted option. Inigo has lots of different plugins if you want to use this with things like Apollo Server, GraphQL Yoga, Envelope, and so much more. You can also deploy Inigo alongside your different services, whether that's in Docker, AWS, or anywhere else. So this has been a quick look at Inigo and what it can do, and we'll learn more in another video.